Hey, we've been talking about windmills and we're back. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, about some tools that are out there that you can check out that will help you visualize some things and play around and you can see what's going on on, you know, weather patterns and everything else. So before we talk more about the windmills, let's look at some of these tools. And now the first one we're going to check out is wind maps. Now there's a few out there and we're going to show some here, but uh, it really shows the wind flows, right? And in this particular case, the bolder lines are stronger winds. And as you can see, like the wind doesn't just blow in one spot. Like it goes across like the entire continent and, and go maybe from ocean to ocean or, or pieces of the continent to the other. It goes a long ways. Now, there's also windmill maps. Okay, so this shows the wind generation in the United States. You can get one out there for the world, but this is just the US. There's bolder dots showing where there's more numbers of windmills or larger installations, more power generated there. But there are like 70,000 windmills represented by this map. There's a lot of them. And the latest windmills have like several hundred feet in diameter. They're really big. Okay, now we can also show the windmills on the wind map. And so here you go. So this is, you can see there, this particular day that they had this wind, you can see that their windmills are very well suited at, to place, right? They're, they're put in the high wind areas, at least for this day. Now, another tool we can look at is the weather. Push a wind from one spot to another, it's related to jet stream and temperatures, cold and hot and moisture and stuff. And the moisture content is how much evaporated water is present in the air. And so when you follow the wind, you'll also find weather because the wind's transferring cool air to warm places or warm air to cool places. And there's also moisture differences. And usually hotter air that's coming in off the ocean is going to be very humid and it's gonna have a lot of moisture and the stuff that's cold coming in from parts of the client, the continent that are cold is gonna have very little moisture. And when those streams find each other and mix, they're gonna have a lot of weather associated with them. When we overlay the map of the weather on top of the wind map, you can see like, hey, look, this, this wind map here has a lot of bright streaks and that's where it's stronger winds. Then there's also this radar map with the storm activity in purple. Right? And when you add these two together, you can see that the storms are existing on the edges of the wind. And that's because the winds really is the same sort of temperature and humidity. And it's, it's all being pushed up to these other areas of like colder air or whatever. And when they start mixing, that's when you get the weather. So you can see it's on the edges of the big wind. right? But wind and weather, they go hand in hand. When there's, when there's air moving, there's also moisture and temperature differences. And when those things start mixing, that's when you get the rain or the snow or whatever kind of bad weather that you want to find. Okay, now the next piece that you got, there's also water content maps. Okay, remember I was talking about how much moisture there is in the air. So moisture is really related to how much energy that there is. When the sun's energy gets absorbed across the ocean, it drives moisture up into the air. Okay, so that's really, it's a lot of energy. Moisture content is basically energy content in a lot of ways. And so when you're looking at the water content map, you can see as it's coming off of really hotter areas of the country that are high humidity, there's a lot of moisture in here, okay? And then it flows across the continent and it starts hitting some of these uh, these things here that are really the mountains or the hills. That when it starts hitting these, you can see that the moisture content changes quickly. It drops off, right? So the brighter the stuff is, the more moisture that there is, right? And so it drops off, right? And so here's an elevation map. Elevation map showing hills, you know, here in particularly, let's look at Florida area here. And you can see that as it goes up, in, in elevation, even a small amount of elevation, it can knock that moisture out real quick. And that's because as it, and we've talked about this before, but that's because as it goes up in elevation, it cools off. And then as it cools off, it can't hold as much moisture anymore, so it drops out, okay? You get a lot of rain. And so that's why like these even small changes in elevation matter to the amount of moisture that's in there and how much moisture can be carried to one spot to another. And so the water content, it's highly related to the energy content. The sun's energy put that water there. If you start messing with taking energy out of that by an elevation or by sticking windmills in there, you can change how much water content is in there. And, and history has made our Earth what it is. And the weather it happens on Earth, and all of the trains kind of have accustomed to what's happened in the past. So if we start building a whole bunch of stuff that moves maybe where this moisture falls, right? So maybe we, we got this plains and we're sticking all these windmills here. And then now instead of being able to just flow smoothly across the plains, like it says, hey, I got too much resistance. I'm going to start moving over here to the right. I'm going to move more towards Kentucky where there's more hills and stuff. You know what? Guess what? It's going to change where it drops the moisture. And maybe that area isn't as custom to draining off high amounts of moisture. And so it's going to be more prone to flooding. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm not saying this is exactly what's happening. I'm saying it's a possibility here. 
right? The more we mess with these things like airflow, the more likely we are to have unintended consequences. Just think about this, right? Don't you think that if we push the moisture off from, you know, maybe going straight north, we push a little bit to the east into some hills, don't you think that could change? If, if elevation can make things cooler and then now we can get more rainfall, don't you think that could cause rainfall in places that aren't used to it? And isn't moving weather and moisture from one spot that's used to it to a spot that's not, isn't that, isn't that kind of like climate change? Isn't that what you think of? You know, hey, there's lots of rain. We didn't used to get it. Isn't that what you think of when you're thinking of climate change? And so when you're thinking about us building so many windmills, right? I mean, if you put them all together, if you put all the windmills you had and you stuck them in a line, you'd span the entire West Coast and they're several hundred feet tall. Don't you think that's a lot of windmills that might affect this? I mean, look at the wind map, right? I mean, you can see there's tons of them across the, across the country. Anyways, and this is just the beginning. The politicians are out there. They're pushing for more and more wind energy. Right? The, the billionaires, they're buying land anticipating this. They're all lining up to make money off of this, right? These big energy companies and stuff. I mean, everybody's lining up to the trough trying to get money. This isn't necessarily about great things. This is about, hey, somebody's come up with an idea. People are buying into it. They want to sell it to you because they're going to make money, right? It isn't pure here. There isn't any purity. This is marketing. Just be careful what you're wishing for here. And it's not like these things are somebody's backyard windmills. These things aren't like five foot tall water drivers. I mean, these things are huge, right? I mean, Washington is looking at building a 300 square mile offshore wind project. The politicians are pushing for this. And come on, you don't think that that many windmills out there are gonna maybe reduce the amount of moisture that goes up the Columbia River Valley or maybe up over uh, Snoqualmie Summit. You don't think that if we start messing with how much, how much wind's coming up off the ocean, and keep in mind, the wind going across the top of the ocean is aerating stuff. The air is kind of blowing up there, and it's helping mix, and it's helping cause evaporation as it goes across the surface of the ocean, right? So think lake affects snow, right? Look at the Great Lakes. There, the wind comes across there, and it just whips across those Great Lakes. It speeds up like crazy because there's nothing to slow it down. And then it starts hitting uh, New York, right? All the trees, all the hills. Guess what happens? You get all the snow, right? Come on, Buffalo. You know what I'm talking about. We're gonna start slowing that down. We're gonna start taking some of the energy out. I mean, who knows what we're gonna do, right? I mean, maybe it's no big deal, but maybe it is. We just don't know. I mean, has anybody actually proven exactly how many windmills we can build before it's a problem? I don't think so.